And it starts recording. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, thanks again for <laughs> thanks again for tuning in for another episode of Industry Insights. We have another amazing guest uh, this evening. I have Esther Calloway from So Far Sounds uh, that will be talking with us today in regards to booking and all that good stuff. Esther, how are you? You're muted. There you go. Okay. You, you right. got control. I know, right? <laughs> I'm so corporate America that I literally like don't take myself off of mute until I'm ready. <laughs> it's the corporate world in me. But I hear I'm, you. I'm good. I'm really good, Patrice. I really appreciate you just like inviting me on, thinking about me, considering me for this opportunity. Yeah. I'm excited to share, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, I'm always down to 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 invite and give opportunities or just, you know, do things for those that are that are cool. You know, this yeah. industry, you you I mean the people they flaky. They, they are real they flaky. Can, flaky. They they can be just I don't want to say too much, but they can be interesting. They can. <laughs> and you know what I love though is that I've really been blessed to be surrounded by such like high quality people you know what I'm saying that have mm -hmm. like really good standards in the industry they yeah. want to do right really yep. one of the reasons why you know I, I love working for so far and I um even started working for them and just in the industry in general is because I wanted to like empower the artist community and like you know help them grow and all of those things and so even from my early days of like starting in artist management and all mm -hmm. that, I'm sure we'll get into that, but yep. that was just really the goal is like, it's so many crooked people in the industry. Like yep. there's also on the other end of that spectrum, so many people that genuinely just want to support and help artists. So. Exactly. Exactly. And you're, you're definitely in a good spot where you have to have those qualities in order to book acts. For so far, because that's their whole motto and their mission, just giving people opportunity just to sh showcase themselves to, to a new audience. So that's that's real awesome. So, yeah, I'm always down to collaborating with folks that are on the same page. So, yeah, I, I appreciate you for uh, taking the time out this evening. So, like I said, I thought you were in, in, in the uh, in the East Coast. So I'm like, oh, you you it's 730 your time. But it's like, no, it's 630 there, too. It's 630. So. Yeah, it's 635 <laughs> right now. Uh, I'm in I'm Good in y'all i'm in dallas yeah um, i live on a ranch so my wi-fi is real you know, sometimey uh, okay. <laughs> but it's going it's doing good right now so i hope that it stays like that because the weather is pretty clear but yeah Ooh. so I'm, I'm all about like you know i'm real for real like a texas girl you got you got animals out there uh we're actually building our chicken coop right now okay starting with the chicken uh yeah we started with the chickens <laughs> Um, we're, we're actually back at the property that I grew up on. And so we lost it a few years ago. Long story, got it back um, yeah. last year. But uh, growing up, I had horse, we had horses and cows and what? all of that. So I'm a, I'm a country girl for real. I got, I, awesome. fish, I love fishing. I got a pond in the back, you know. What? That is awesome. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> I would have never guessed it. Cool. So, okay. So take us back. How did you become... Esther of so far, like, how did you get into music? Yeah, so I actually started, um, my dad is a pastor, was a pastor, he's, he's passed okay. away, he was a pastor, hmm, so grew up around music, thank you, hmm. uh, grew up around music, me and my sisters had a singing group, sung praise and worship at church, you know, all of those good things, yeah. uh, I have so many local artists in Dallas that I'm really good friends with, mm -hmm. and so actually one specific uh, friend of mine, Gino uh, Iglehart, he used to be the musical director for Erica Badu, Okay. And so he had, he was ready to kind of like step out and do his own thing mm -hmm. and I had absolutely no idea about artist management. I, I just did not. I just knew that I was super passionate about helping my friends. And so anything that they needed, like, you know, contract negotiation, like I'm a lawyer. I didn't know what I was doing, but <laughs> I was like, okay, I got you. Like you want more money? Okay. I'm gonna get you some more money. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started out, he asked me, he was like, do you want to be my, my manager? And I was like, I don't know how to do that. He was like, it's going to be fine. I'm gonna teach you. So he really taught me the ropes. So I started off um, as artist management, started my own company, E. Callaway Management. That okay. was almost Mm, 15 years ago, give or take. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that in the local area, you know, just working with my friends and helping them out, getting them shows. And so, or as much as possible. But what I discovered is that 
a lot of the artists didn't necessarily need just management. They needed really focused on the booking side, right? Because that's where they get their money. Yep. And at the time I was young and I was just like, well, I don't, I'm not a booking agent. You know, I don't do that. I manage. And really they just didn't have anything to manage at the time. So um, that was a, something that I just discovered, you know, working okay. in the industry, but I shifted my whole brand into not just doing management, but really focusing on the booking and the talent buying. Nice. And so I started doing that, started working with like local cities, um, like little areas outside of Dallas. So like uh, city of DeSoto and city of Dallas and city of Lancaster. And so I just started booking like their, their festivals and things like that. So that's kind of mm -hmm. how I started with the talent buying. But for so far, I just happened to see the Leon Bridges video that mm -hmm. came out um and like I, I i saw it like maybe a few months after it was recorded and it was released and mm -hmm. i was just like what is this like that was my first time ever hearing about so far yeah no idea what it was and i was just sharing it with my friend and she was just like okay well let's get tickets and so she got tickets and invited me to a show mm -hmm. I fell in love i was just like in awe and so immediately yeah. after that show i remember running up to the city director at the time and i was just like what can I do? Like, how mm -hmm. can I help? And, at, you know, at, uh, at that time, it was really volunteer based, right? So it wasn't like we were getting paid for doing any of this at the time. It was really just called an ambassador program. And so okay. I was doing it for free, but I just loved being, I wanted to really get exposed to a different side of the artist community because I was really connected to a lot of like underground artists, things like that. But yeah. I just wanted to expand my own network, my own reach. And so it was just a great opportunity to do that. And I started with just like hosting and emceeing and doing show lead. Um, and I did that. I started in 2016 and I did that mm. all the way through 2019 for free. Mm. Uh, <laughs> for three years, I literally was just like, I mean, I it. Right, it's a passion. Exactly. <laughs> it's a passion. Yep. It really was. And I've I met so many amazing artists through that experience, but um, I decided to apply for the CD director role in Dallas initially in 2019. I got that position. Mm, and, nice. you know, obviously so many things have transitioned between 2019, COVID, post-COVID. Yep. Yep. And so uh, when the company went down um, in 2020, you know, we had to cancel like 1,500 shows. Mm -hmm. We cut like half of our employee pool. It was so many layoffs going on. And, you know, I'd lost so many friends in that, you know, not, not lost them, but yeah. lost within the company. Yep. And so um, it was just like a very, you know, stressful, stressful experience. But even within that, the company was able to kind of come out better on the other side we restructured a lot within that period. And so mm -hmm. I went from city director um, booking about 19 shows a month is what we were doing in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And I'm now uh, regional. Uh, I do the regional booking for Central North America. So I cover all of our Texas markets all the way up to Illinois. So kind of the center of the US yeah. and doing about a hundred shows a month right now. So it was a very mm -hmm. big, very big transition from 19. Yeah. 100 um yeah. but the team has grown um and so that's kind of like been my journey with so far thus far that is awesome and then they they ship you around wherever you need to be they they, yeah. they send you there because I know the last time we spoke or tried to speak you were out in London with Mama Duke uh-huh I was she just kept trying to call me on Instagram I'm like girl I don't I don't have a ringer on on Instagram my phone <laughs> my phone to be blowing up blowing up all the time what who, who it's, is it? Who, it? It's who so funny because she was like, you know, Patrice, and I no, this is how we got into this conversation. So <laughs> we were we were talking about the blue check, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. And so she was like, um, she was like, man, I know this artist named Ken. And I was like, Ken the messenger? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know Ken. And so she was like, wait, so you know Ken's manager? And I was like, yes, I know Patrice. And so that's kind of how all of that. Oh, uh -huh. That conversation all about the blue check, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> Mama Duke's like, I want the blue check too. She been like, trying to get me to get her a blue check. I'm like, he got it through our distributor. Mm -hmm. That's and I'm like, it's like, it's so many different ways. Like it's yeah. just not, it's not clear cut like that anymore. But exactly. I'm like, I don't even have a blue check. That's how he got it. Uh -huh. Like, I got it for him. Like, what where's mine at? You know? <laughs> exactly. This sounds like, girl, I'm trying to get a blue check too. So we all in this together. <laughs> I love her though. She is so awesome. She is dope. She is dope. Cool. Okay. So like I said, I thought you were in New York, but you're actually in Dallas. Mm -hmm. 
that that is cool. Okay. So when you had your own management company, you said you were working the surrounding areas. Did you ever go like outside to the other major markets, you know, Houston or even Austin at all? Or did you just stay in the Dallas area? Because I know that they all are pretty spaced out in Texas. They are. They really yeah. are. And so I was really focused in on the Texas market. I did a little bit of Oklahoma, but really okay. focusing on Dallas, Austin, and Houston, even before I started working for so far. Yeah. Um, and that's because it was so easy for artists to tour, right? Mm-hmm. Like just kind of like regionally. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you hit like, you know, Austin is a couple hours away. Yeah. Houston is three or four hours away. Oklahoma can be like two or three hours away, depending on the direction. And so it was just easier to kind of start getting the artists booked in those markets. So that is, it was driving distance without them having to like catch flights and, you know, kind of like more and keeping the overhead low as well. We were riding tours. Um, But yeah, I I really kind of stayed within Texas and Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Nice. nice. Now I, I love asking guests this question because, you know, there's a lot of working musicians there's a lot of people that have the side hustle, music's the, high, the side hustle until it becomes the main hustle. You said that you worked for so far for free for a few years. What yeah. were you doing in the meantime? Were you doing anything else to yeah. keep the phone so, or what? Oh, yeah. And I was working at an insurance company. I worked at Edna. I worked at United Healthcare. Okay. I worked at uh, Nestle Ready Refresh, which is the oh, water store of Nestle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was doing everything that I could do in order to basically fund my passion, right? Yeah. And so yeah. at one point, I really had quit everything. When I was working at um, at United Healthcare, I mm-hmm. decided, I was like, okay, I, I just want to kind of like do my own business mm-hmm. full time. And I did it for about a year and a half. And I just discovered that I just did not know what I was doing when it came to building a business from the ground up, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it was hard for me to get to that resolution because I you know sometimes we hear so much that like it's all about the grind and you got to struggle yeah. and like all of especially that right? in but music especially music, music. Yeah. especially mm-hmm. right and so realistically though I was a single parent you know my daughter is now 18 in college and so at that point you know she's probably in middle school and mm-hmm. you know I mean I had real life bills I you know had a car note I had rent you know all of those things and so it just was not feasible for me to be able to go out. I felt like I was out in the deep end without a life jacket, right? I just did not have the tools I needed in order to be successful in that space of just becoming just like a full-time entrepreneur. And so, you know, and I, I mean, literally one of my friends at the time just was like, look, girl, you got bills. Like you, you can't be out, you, you struggling, you drowning. (laughs) Right. It's okay to be able to say that I need to work a regular nine to five in order to find my passion. Like, and that's really how I had to kind of recalibrate, you know what I'm saying? My whole mindset when it came to how do I still kind of do my side hustle and still really be able to create um, that to be a full-time gig at some point. But I also need to learn, right? I need to learn strategy. I need to learn processes, procedures, like how to actually get clients and I really wanted to transition my company into not necessarily just working with individual artists, but really for focusing on the corporate side. Mm-hmm. That was something that I that I discovered in so far because when we went down for COVID, we weren't able to do shows, so we really had to pivot into the virtual space, and we mm-hmm. really had to focus more on like corporate contracts with yep. companies that were wanting us to like host virtual concerts for their their clients and their customers and things like that. And so it was a huge pivot for us, right? We weren't doing in person concerts for a whole year, yeah. and so those type of experiences have really taught me what's necessary when you are talking about building a brand, building exactly. a business that is sustainable, yep. that's scalable that can go from one year to a 10 year to a 20 year company and still be able to like make more income and actually like bring in real dollars and cents that can actually fund your life. And so I just realized like, okay, yeah, I wasn't at that place, Mm -hmm. you know, six, Mm -hmm. six or seven years ago, I just wasn't there. And so even within so far right now, it's still teaching me things that I can incorporate into my own business because my own business is still going, right. I'm still doing Mm -hmm. festivals. I'm still doing contract work still doing talent buying, things like that. Um, So it's just an opportunity for me to like get what I can learn from the corporate side of things and be able to implement that in my own business. Yeah, that makes so much sense. You know, just even from my own experience, it's like, it's hard when you just focused on the artist. 
Yeah, it's not sustainable yeah. at all. You kind of yeah. have to go for the corporate contracts. And even as an artist, you got to think bigger than just the smaller yeah. gigs. You have yeah. to think bigger in order to, to make it sustainable for you. You know, home yeah. is based in Nashville and there's a lot of things going on. So I try to tell some of the members that are there at the home base, it's like, the sky is the limit, you know, try to get you a label job just, just so that way, you know, you can learn the industry. You That's can right. get that corporate experience because it's not what, a, what people think it is. Like the industry is more corporate than anything. And they have it no really clue. Is. Yeah. They have no clue. Yeah. It's so corporate. And I didn't really even, I didn't even think about having a job in me in the industry. Right. Because uh, again, like you said, the industry, the music industry is a corporation. It's a corporate yeah. setting. Right. And so I just never even thought about that. I just thought that as an entrepreneur, I got to do it all myself. Yeah. I, you know, and I'm gonna get out here and book these artists. I'm, we gonna, you know, pull, we gonna pull it up from my boot stirrups and like get it going and just hit the road. And it was just like, this is just not something that it's scalable for me. Like I need something that is more solid. I need a 401k. I need benefits. I need, you know, I need a consistent chip. Yep. And, but I didn't, I never really thought about working inside the industry, but there's so many opportunities inside the industry mm-hmm. that will still allow you to do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Your, yep. your, your passion, but still be able to give you the experience that you need in order to like take it to the next level. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Totally makes sense. So mm-hmm. what would you, who, who is your biggest artist that you booked Ooh. for, for your, your, your businesses and your, your company, as well as with so far? Oh, um, mm, let me think, let me think the biggest artist that I've mm-hmm. booked. Biggest I booked a lot of gospel artists. Okay. Um, so I did the walls group, which is okay. cool, pretty big. Um, let me think who else. We just did a festival last year in Dallas and I'm trying to think of, this is so sad because I can't even remember who the headliner was. That's mm. very ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> that's that's just how many goodness. artist names I got in my head right now. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, I've actually been able to work with some really cool artists inside of So Far as well, because we do have a lot of commercial partnerships that come through. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with Zach Person. He's an artist that's out uh, originally out of Austin, but he's like blowing up right now. An artist named Mobley. Um, Dan right. Beacon is just like kind of like electro pop artist. Yeah. Um, we just did another show that actually that's coming up right now with Delta. Um, we booked an artist named Brent Denon that's like mm-hmm. super huge in like the singer songwriter space um so yeah just you know it may not necessarily be artists that are like on the top 100 but yeah they're they're like blowing up right now they're out there killing it yeah yeah as as a matter of fact there's another artist named shuba um we have a a really cool opportunity right now that we're doing yeah she's chicago yeah she's out of chicago huge right now on tiktok Mm -hmm. like social media yep. blowing up oh that's awesome Alexis I just saw your message um but yeah she she's amazing she works yep. she does uh so far shows on a pretty consistent basis like so far it's kind of a part of her touring uh yeah. when she's traveling but she's also uh we also plan on sending her to London so we're doing an artist residency right now so she's one of the nice. artists that was selected for that so Perfect. yeah so we're yeah we're, we're trying to do some things but we're we're able to really work with uh, Black Pumas have played so far shows, of course, um, just kind of like on the commercial partnership side. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I met Shuba at a uh, Women in Music uh, networking event in Chicago. And she was just very humble and sweet mm-hmm. and just in there networking and stuff. And I'm like, you know, yeah, we got to stay in touch and da, 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 you know, the, the networking lingo and everything. Yeah. So a year later, she's everywhere. I'm like, what? <laughs> like for real wait a minute she is killing it that is so awesome yeah. so yeah. Oh, so so working with so far how do you come across talent to book do you take submissions or you go through the submissions or do you kind of be a little more proactive with it and, and reach out to them so it's a, a little bit of both primarily okay. though our artists are coming in through our application process okay so we have the application that's like housed on our website a lot of them are recommended from other artists that are already in our community that, you know, kind of encourages them to apply. Yeah. Um, so I would say 90% of the artists that are performing on specifically our discovery formats or our discovery mm-hmm. shows are kind of like the shows that we don't release who the artists are 
mm-hmm. that are performing. So it really is an opportunity for our guests to discover a new talent yep. uh, within the local market or even touring artists as well. Mm-hmm. And so the majority of our shows that are booked from a discovery format are going to be through the application. Gotcha. Um, the other 10% is going to be through scouting. Okay. So myself, and then I also have a team uh, of, uh, I have a regional booker that works with me as well as a local booking lead that works in Chicago. Okay. And so they also assist in just kind of scouting talent that is either coming through the market or talent that we're just kind of discovering online via Spotify or TikTok or Instagram. Yeah. Like so many, so many platforms as you can discover talent right now, but mm-hmm. about 10% is coming through the scouting process. Nice. Nice. And what do you look for? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So, because <laughs> I, I, I noticed so far, you you know, you guys book people that are unknown, like completely yeah. unknown, but yet yeah. you have those that are killing it on social media and got the numbers and the streams and whatnot. So is there something that you guys look for? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So when we're talking about, again, that, that specific discovery format, Mm-hmm. When we talk about that discovery format, we're not looking at anything that is like a metric online, right? Like how many Spotify numbers you have or Instagram. We're not looking at that. We really are looking at three areas when we look at application review. So we're looking at the musicality, right? The the quality of their, their skill level with whatever mm-hmm. their talent is, whether that's spoken word, instrumentation, mm-hmm. vocal ability. We're also looking at their content and composition. So really the way that they arrange their songs, they write their songs, are they a skillful songwriter? Um, do they know how to compose music that really kind of draws a, an audience in? And then we're also looking at stage presence. Mm-hmm. So those are really the three areas that we're looking for when I'm opening up an application, those are the three things that I'm like looking to stand out, right? Because when you hit a so far stage, again, they won't know who you are. So the whole goal is for the artist to come to a so far show and gain followers, right? We want our artists to see like hard numbers on their Instagram or hard numbers on their Spotify streams, just based on being in a so far room. And so if you come into a room of an, of a get of an audience of 60 or a hundred or 150 people, we really want all those people to support you. We want them to buy your merch. And so it's really important that in order for, t- in order to do that, you really have to blow the audience away, right? right like right. really are looking for artists that are at a certain caliber in their artistry, not necessarily on the digital platform. That part is not important to us because we want to help build that for you. Yeah. So you can be at zero. You don't even, you could be, you could have five Instagram followers. Yeah. I could care less. Like, <laughs> Seriously, like when I'm looking at your application and that's a part of the application process too. Like we tell artists that when they apply is that even though we're getting your socials, like that's only because we send that out to guests after the show. And so we want to make sure that they're able to connect, but that's not something that we're looking for from a discovery space. We also have other formats, right? And so when we're talking about partnership opportunities, like the partnership with Delta, Mm -hmm. depending on the brand, they are looking for hard metrics, right? Mm -hmm. Because they are already an established brand. They want to work with artists that have some level of establishment on the, in the digital space. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at their Spotify numbers. We are looking at their Instagram followers. We are looking at their online engagement. You know, we have brands that will go as far as like, okay, what is their lyrics talking about? Right? Like we did a partnership with, um, the Prince Museum in Chicago. Mm. And so it was it was very focused on, obviously all of the artists had to do like a Prince cover, but yeah. they were very in tune with like, who are these artists online? Like do that, like basically you couldn't like have anything about drugs in your lyrics or, exactly. you know, like it's just very, some very specific things that the brands and partners will require. Yeah. And so those are the things that we obviously are looking for. Now, those opportunities are higher paying as well, right? Because mm-hmm. the artists do have an online presence. Mm-hmm. They are able to kind of like push and sell tickets because they already have a following, whether that's mm-hmm. on, on Instagram or on Spotify. And yeah. so those are the, the different opportunities um, yeah. that we have. So it can kind of range from the discovery. We have virtual opportunities and then we also have partnership opportunities. There's levels to it. It's levels. There's yeah. Levels to the game. Really I try is. to tell Ken that all the time. There's levels. Relax. Calm it down. It absolutely here. You got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's so hard because yeah. artists, you know, listen, everybody knows the the famous Erica Badu line. She's yeah. an artist who's sensitive about her. Mm. 
Uh-huh. Most artists are very sensitive about their work and you should be, right? Because you need to protect it and you need to make sure um, right. that other people respect it. However, it's very important to understand that, again, there are levels to different opportunities. So right. even when you're talking about an artist that is not necessarily in, in so far, but just, you know, artists that are on this call right now that are like, okay, so I want to just, you know, take my brand to the next level. I want to get higher paying gigs, right? With higher paying gigs comes higher responsibilities and more exactly. responsibilities, right? Yep. So they are looking at your metrics. And so that's something that's really important to start digging into is like, if you are not really engaging with your audience on Instagram or you don't have a, a large following or you haven't released a mu a, you know music in a year and a half or two years, yep. it's like, they're gonna look at that, right? Because exactly. they wanna know that the people that they're partnering with has some level of viability in the mm -hmm. industry, right? They have some level of like engagement with their audience. And so yep. just something I wanted to drop to. Yeah. Yep, for them. Yep. So that, that's super important. You know, I know quite a few of you um, online now have attended a couple other sessions that I've hosted and I talk about it, like those metrics and your activity online is super, like it's crucial. Yes, we say don't pay attention to the numbers, but we do look at how you engage with your audience on the day to day. You know, that is so crucial nowadays. You know, I, I try to tell artists that not just the ones here with home, but it just in general, like forget, forget the metric host every day. And I think that's one thing that I love about mama Duke, you know, and I've told her that plenty of times that it's all about engagement. And she talks to her audience as if they were cool, like as if they were in like her family. Room. Like their family, exactly. And I'm like, you got something going. And she doesn't even release music that often. Mm -mm. I think her last album was what, like a year and a half, two years ago now? Yeah. And yeah. I'm I like- I just released a single, like maybe the last quarter of last year. Yeah, um, a yeah. Couple of singles. But yeah, and she's she's doing a lot of like experimentation right now with her sound. Like she's kind exactly. of coming away from like the, the normal like hip hop yep. and doing more pop, pop. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? If that's the thing, yep. I just made it up. But <laughs> I know what you meant. Like, yeah, exactly. You know exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah, she, she's trying to, she's kind of transitioning into that. But what yeah. I love about her is that she doesn't necessarily only post about her music. Actually, the music is not necessarily the primary thing that she posts. She just not posts about life. She posts about life. her extracurricular activities. She posts about, you know what I'm saying? Like relationships. relationships all it, yes. Like, and that's really what's important, right? Because yeah. your audience, want, they want to know who you are beyond exactly. your, your music, right? That's why they follow you on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Because if they, if they wasn't interested in that, they would just keep listening to you on Spotify, right? right? And so right. you have a lot of artists that may have super high numbers. I've seen it so many times, super high numbers on Spotify because maybe they're getting added to a lot of playlists because that song is popping. But mm -hmm. then you transition over to their Instagram and it's like less than a thousand followers, mm -hmm. right? And that's because they're not posting, they're not engaging, mm -hmm. they're not pulling people in from those yeah. spaces to say like, hey, follow me or make sure, you know, whatever the case is. So mm -hmm. it, there's always, sometimes there's this disconnect, but yeah. it really is important to kind of bridge the gap with your audience and make them feel like they really know things about you that nobody else knows. Exactly. Um, I did see a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I don't know if you want to. Uh, let's go ahead and, and yeah, let's knock that out since we're kind of on the topic. Do they record metrics of the show impact for the booking? And so I think if I'm if I'm understanding G, if I'm understanding your question correctly, you're asking, are we tracking the metrics of how many guests follow the artist at the show? If you want to drop something, yeah, in yeah, if he's still it. here, so yeah, okay. I'm assuming like, oh yeah, before yeah. and after the show. Yeah, so that's a great question, and we do. So what we do is before the doors open, our shows normally open like. 30 minutes before the show starts, typically at like 7.30, our doors are going to open. At 7.45, the guests all get an, an email that gives them um, a direct link to the artist's profile. So we have a personal profile for so far as well. So every artist in our database has their own profile that a guest can follow. And then we also share their social media, whatever link the artist wants to update in their mm -hmm. profile in order to share with them too, right? They get that so, via email or is it like an airdrop or what? How do they get that? Yeah, they get it via their email. Okay. 
Yeah, they get it via their email. So yeah. when they sign up for a ticket, right, mm -hmm. they're getting, we're getting their email. And then, so they get that at 745 before the doors open. We just actually started that mid last year okay. because they were only getting the post-show email, which is like after the show is over and all that. Yes. So we really wanted to kind of give them that information up front to let them know like, hey, here, this is who you're going to see tonight. Yeah. You're all in the room. Our MCs will tell them, hey, you just got an email, you know, before the show starts, like make sure you check mm -hmm. it out, follow the artist. Um, and then they also get that post show as well. So internally, we are tracking how many guests are following the artist on their so far profile. Mm -hmm. And then, but we're not, we're not able to get the metrics on how many artists are following. Um, I'm sorry, how many guests are following an artist on their personal Instagram page or whatever their, their link preference is, whether that's their Spotify. So that's something that we can track it. We can track how many guests are hitting that link. Mm -hmm. So we can see like, oh, okay, so maybe 75% of the room actually like really like this artist because they like follow, they actually click the link to go to their Instagram, but we can't confirm if they actually followed them. Mm -hmm. What we can't confirm is whether they follow their so far profile. And mm -hmm. so what the so far profile does is that it alerts that guest when that artist is in their in town or they're playing another so far show like, hey, an artist that you really like this you know, plan another so far show, whatever the case is, right? So they actually can get that information from them, um, but they we can't track the external, unfortunately. Gotcha. So like a band's in town in a sense. Yeah. It's yeah. like notifying them of when they're in town or whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. And you can all, you can, you know, see like, you can see all your past shows as a guest. So I can go into any show that I've been added to a list for yeah. and be able to see exactly who those artists were, whether that's two years ago, three years ago, whatever the case is. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So. All right. So when we spoke uh, and you were out in London with Mama Duke, what was that? What was that event that you guys were yeah. hosting right there? So that was actually the artist residency that we're, okay. that we're hosting right now. So it launched um, at the last quarter of last year um, and is actually going to continue throughout. Um, right now, we actually have two artists that are there. And mm -hmm. so with the artist residency, that gives the artist an opportunity to uh, stay in London for a month. And so with that artist res residency, we actually cover their lodging. We have a great partnership with um a resident like apartment building called uncle um yeah. that based in london and so mm -hmm. they get a chance to stay there for a month we booked them for some so far shows um you know just an opportunity to get some additional content the marketing team really supports them heavily on gaining content around like new releases and we have artists that are kind of using it for different reasons right so some are using it as a writing retreat. Some are using it as to finish their next project. Some are using it to connect with local mm -hmm. musicians and maybe bring them on to projects that are coming up. Uh, so it's, it's a couple of different ways, obviously, uh, multiple ways really that an artist can utilize that space. But the goal is to really be able to take an artist, bring them to another space and for them to kind of engulf the culture of that, that area and really be able to implement it and help help them to take their career to the next level, honestly. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Do you guys ever sign any artists? Do you do no, that? No, okay. no. So we, and, and that's because, I mean, we're not a, a label, so we can't yeah. te like technically sign an artist, yeah. but we do have a lot of label connections. Right. And so what happens is that we have a whole another side of so far from our artist partnership team. And they really focus heavily on like the agents, the, the, like, you know, major managers, the the major mm -hmm. booking agencies, mm -hmm. things like that. And so what they do is they, you know, pitch opportunities to those artists as well, or those agents may reach out to them and say, hey, I have a new artist that's on my roster. I really want to try to get them um, introduced into some specific markets that they're streaming high in, and they don't necessarily have, you know, a lot of touring history. They mm -hmm. use our shows for that all the time, right? And so, so far shows is really an opportunity for artists to get in, in front of new audiences, yeah. but also to be utilized for touring. So we have a lot of artists that tour on so far and mm -hmm. that touring looks like, you know, if you have, if you're already planning a tour, Patrice for Kim mm -hmm. and you're saying, okay, so we have like these three like anchor dates that mm -hmm. we know for sure are going to give us the amount of money that we need to kind of fund mm -hmm. the tour but we have these spot dates in the middle that we need to fill. So yep. far, it's really great at like filling those gaps in tours. 
And so we have a lot of artists that really utilize so far for that. And nice. we also have artists that just really tour on so far along, especially in Texas, yeah. or markets that are drivable. You know, yeah. so you think about like Chicago, Minneapolis, and you know, uh, Philly, or you know, like all of these areas. They just like oh, you could drive three or four hours and get to those markets easily. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Do you? How do you select the person for the residency, or is there like an application process? It is. So it is an application process. And so what that residency, the application process right now is still kind of getting, mm, it's, we're still working on that process because it's just mm -hmm. so many artists that's in our network. Yeah. But what we've done is that we've really um, created an opportunity for artists that we know have been like playing a bunch of shows, been already torn with so far. And they're also killing, you know, like, Mm -hmm. We can kind of see that they're elevating beyond their local market, right? So that's really important for the residency. Mm -hmm. So if you are already, for instance, Mama Duke, right? So Mama Duke is getting some major like media coverage. Mm -hmm. She's getting, um, you know, she's being able to like travel around. She's, mm -hmm. you know, just went to the, the Grammys and yeah. things like that. So she's already like evolving beyond that Austin, you know, space, yep. and kind mm -hmm. of going outside, even if it's just abroad into Texas or into just the region, yeah. And so those are the things that we really notice. And we, you know, those are the artists that we're like, okay, cool. I think that this will be a really great opportunity because you're at a certain space in your career where this is really going to help you, yeah. right? And so it's going, going to be, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a certain metric or anything like that, but it does mean that you're going to have to be within the software community and you're going to have to be utilizing all of the benefits that we provide so that you can kind of bubble up to the top. And so that- you know, that, that gets on my radar, that gets on my, my other, the other um, regional bookers, you know, because we have four bookers within the company. It's not necessarily a lot of us, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm covering Central. We have someone that's covering East Coast, somebody that's covering West Coast, somebody that's covering the UK. And then, of course, we have a team under us, but primarily we, uh, we kind of handle like all of the artist development and things like that. So gotcha. right Sounds now, like a lot. It is. It is a lot. <laughs> That's how the process is, is being yeah. handled right now with the application. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily know if it will ever be fully open across the board to every artist, just because it's so many artists. Yeah. Um, and we don't have that many opportunities because we're only sending one or two artists a month, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. So just think about that. It's 12 months in a year. Yeah. With 24 spots. And we got 50,000 artists. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So there yeah. has to be... Yeah, it has to make make sense for us to be able to say like, okay, so this artist has, they played the Discovery Show format, yeah. they've been doing great there, now they're starting to utilize our touring side of things, yeah. you know, like now, you know, they're getting really great feedback, which is something that I don't think a lot of artists really fully understand that they get feedback from every single show that they perform at, mm -hmm. whether that's from guests, from crew, from our host, um, and so, the, you know, we really take that feedback um, into consideration and so we don't want to send anyone that's you know getting below average feedback yeah out of our country you know what I'm saying <laughs> like right. this is not the space for that like right. that just tells me that you need a little bit more development yeah. you know what I'm saying like let me make sure that I that I have like a, a fee, fee give that feedback to that artist to let them know like hey we think that you know you have some great potential like these are some areas of uh, and opportunities of growth like those are things that need to happen first before we send them over the pond to mm -hmm. you know play for a month exactly. but those are the things that we're considering as well when we think about the residency awesome awesome all right so let's go ahead and open it up for questions we got a couple coming in now so yeah if you guys have any questions feel free to drop them in the chat yeah. um uh, you scroll I just, up i just saw nick um, said he's going to be playing so he's far in New York. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Nikki, talk to uh, Pooja or Grace for that booking, I'm sure. Those are the, those are my people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I'm excited about your show. Yeah. I live in Dallas, so I wish, I so wish, you've been talking to Grace. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I so wish that I was in in NY during that time, but I'm, I'm I, I have no idea why I thought you were there. I don't know. It must be a vibe or something. I would have never thought Texas. I have no idea. Right. I'm like, why is she on the East Coast covering Central? Like, what is going on? Exactly. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I saw you out there, or you go to events there. Like, do you do they send you out there for for some stuff? 
for New York in New York? Yeah. Uh, not really. The, just because what. it's not like I don't really cover that that area. So great yeah. I, is gonna be probably the team that does will be more on on ground than I would. I don't know where I got New York from then. I have no idea. Oh, crazy. Uh, so G Daniel asked, uh, what is the deal so far off offers? So and, and G, I'm assuming that you're talking about probably the discovery show. So for the discovery format, again, that is um, where the artists are not necessarily required to promote. They come in with the room pretty much full of people, um, new fans. So that is, it starts at just a hundred dollar guarantee and it can go up to 150 depending on the capacity of the space. Mm -hmm. So that's just like our general basic first time playing a so far show. You're going to fall within that. You're going to be playing a discovery show and you're going to be getting paid between a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars, um, for that gig, that performance. Mm -hmm. Now that that offering obviously can go up depending on um, if we have like a partnership show, right? Mm -hmm. So those partnership show opportunities, those are the shows where we really are looking at like heavily on the metrics and your Spotify numbers and Instagram and things like that. Those can go up to 800, 1,000. Like, you know, it just kind of depends on the budget for the partnership. But for the most part, you at least do have opportunities to kind of grow within the space. It's not necessarily where you can, you just have to stay at a discovery show. It's like, mm -hmm. as you evolve in your artistry, as you grow and your, your numbers online starts to grow, then that's something that we recognize and notice as well. Yeah. Cool. G coming with the questions. Yes, G, come on. <laughs> yeah. Do they work with agents to procure sponsors? So we don't work with agents to to bring in, procreate, basically bring in sponsors. We don't mm -hmm. do that, but we do have a commercial partnership team that actually seeks out sponsorship. Nice. So nice. we have have a whole team of people that their full job is to like, you know, pitch pitch decks to, to corporations, yes. companies. Like I said, we're doing the Delta Partnership Show. Um, we, we're doing a, a event with Deep Eddie right now. Some of the partners that we worked, it, worked with in the past is Bumble, um, we've mm -hmm. worked with, uh, you know, like liquor sponsors and things like that. So it just kind of depends, um, on the brand, but for the most part, we have a team that focuses in on that. Awesome. Awesome. What's next for you? What's next? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I'm very open right now. <laughs> You're just killing, You're killing just yeah, I'm riding very the wave. I want to, I, I mean, I, I really hope to be with so far as long as possible, honestly, mm -hmm. like as long as there's opportunities for growth internally within the company, then it's something that I'm super passionate about. I've made and built so many relationships through so far. And so I really want to continue cultivating that space. Um, but then on, you know, outside of so far, I'm, I'm building a whole ranch and farm down here in Texas. <laughs> you say there's enough, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm so what's next for me is y'all going to see me in overalls and like sell eggs and, and vegetables at a farmer's market. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear that. I know that's right. Shoot. Easy life. Soft. What they call it now, the soft life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I really love like that's I, I'm really super passionate, equally passionate, like I am on the music side, yeah. the whole form. And like I just love country living. So I really yeah. want to build that out too. That is awesome. That's awesome. I love it for you. Uh let's see. Alexis got a question. Are the touring opportunities uh with so far decided in a similar way to the artists in residency? Like getting a, a lot of show, so far shows and crushing it. No, well, so the, the touring side is not the same as a residency. Like you, the touring is actually a little bit, probably a little bit more easier process. So we actually just rolled out um, a new opportunity on, and this is something that Ken and Patrice, you may not even know about, honestly, because it was just rolled out a couple of weeks ago, but mm -hmm. it's called um, where you can actually specify the specific dates that you'll be in a, in a market and you can mm -hmm. request those dates on through your dashboard. Mm -hmm. so okay. We talk about like the artist profile and the artist dashboard mm -hmm. from the back end of that as an artist, I can say, okay, I want to go to, I already know like what my dates are. I'm going to mm -hmm. be touring. I want to go to Chicago. I want to go to Denver. I want to go to Dallas. I want to go to all, like all of that kind of stuff, right? You can select up to five markets and you can select up to two to three dates within those markets. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that when I go in to our planner, we call it a concert planner on our end. Mm -hmm. When I go into that, I can actually see 
oh, Ken requested this date. Like, even though he may not necessarily be in Dallas, I can see that he requested to play this show for this date. Mm -hmm. If there's an opportunity there, right? So this is a show mm -hmm. that we haven't already fully booked. We yeah. literally go to that pool of artists that's requesting those dates. Um, yeah and we give those you know that that's an offer for them so that's an, a way that you can do the tours and then you can also once you actually get in and you start playing a show you will have kind of like a contact so we were talking Nick was just saying that he's been talking to Grace so if Nick is interested in doing more shows or touring within the market that Grace manages which mm -hmm. is going to East Coast, then Grace is already, you know, that's going to be his contact, right? Yeah. And so all he has to do is email Grace and say, hey, I'm interested. One of the things that I would definitely highly recommend for artists, not necessarily just in so far, but just in general, when you're reaching out to a booking manager, a booking agent, mm -hmm. is to be as specific as possible with your dates. Um, because we get no lie, like hundreds of emails, mm -hmm. probably get a hundred emails a day, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so it's so hard for me to respond to an artist that's just like, I want to tour all of these markets. They send me 20 markets and they, <laughs> I'm available Jan I mean, July through December. And it's like, baby, uh, I can't. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just seeing an email like that makes me sweat. Yeah. I'm like, this is too much. Like, it's going to take me five hours to respond to this one email, right? Right. That ain't so your it, role. <laughs> it ain't, yeah, this no. is just too much, right? And yeah. so he, as specific as possible so mm -hmm. yeah I'm, and I'm only using Nick as an example because I know he's playing a show but if Nick says like hey I'm gonna be in New York mm -hmm. uh, you know this date to this date but I also am interested in playing Boston like do you have yeah. anything in Boston on the 28th or the 27th or you know like give me specific dates so that I can easily go into our side of the concerts yeah. and say like okay so I have an opening for this slot or I have an opening for this date, or I don't have anything, but I can put you on a waiting list. Like it mm -hmm. gives me an opportunity to respond to you in a quicker manner, as well as just kind of tell you what's available and what's not. But yeah. Alexis, to answer your question, it once you have your first show with so far, you will have a person that will that will be your like booking contact and you mm -hmm. can reach out to them for next steps if you're trying to plan a tour. Nice, nice. Now, just to take it back a little bit, let's say they're trying to reach out for their very first show. Like I know what you look for. But what what should they send you to get on your radar? We, we EPK video, anything else? Yeah. So first of all, in order to get on the radar, fill out the application. That's okay. number one. Like fill out the application because we review our applications on a rolling basis. Um, we have maybe like a fourteen day turnaround time from application to at least approval or you know letting you know you're not a good fit or whatever the case is like some type of decision we have about a 14 day turnaround time it was so much longer than that in last year or the year before that you know we were probably at a few months honestly because of just the influx but we have a new process now that we can review applications faster so mm -hmm. the first thing to do is literally to apply if you have my email you can email and I'm and I'll share my email with everyone on this call um, as a matter of fact, I'll drop it in the chat just so everyone can have it. And so um, what I'm looking for, if I get an email from Alexis and you just say, hey, I met you on the call. Um, you know, I, I want to play a show. The number one thing that I want is a nice live video, right? So I need to have a live performance video. And when I say nice, let me rephrase that because it's not nice as in like quality. Mm -hmm. You can be recorded on your phone. But yeah. what I need to know is that from this video, I can measure your, what did we talk about earlier? Your musicality, your mm -hmm. content and composition quality, and your stage presence. I need to be able to see all of that from this live video, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so many times we've had, even from the applications, artists will send over videos and it's not clear. The audio is distorted. Like, I can't really even hear your vocals, things like that. Like, for me, that's going to be an automatic, no, you're not a good fit because I can't even see the quality of what you're presenting. And so if I can't see it, then I can't trust that I can book you on the on a so far stage and you deliver. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that I'm mainly looking for are obviously like what market that you're in, mm -hmm. um, making sure that you already have an application on file. Because literally if an artist emails me, just blanket and just says like, hey, I got your email from such and such, which I'll get all the time. My first thing is like, so great to meet you, fill out the application. Yeah. And then 
I'll let you know what next steps are if we decide that you're a good fit for the space, you know? Um, I'm really big on not judging an artist based on whether they are a good artist or not. Like I'm, I'm here to only determine whether you are a good fit for our stage. I'm not here to measure or judge, you know, if you, if you gonna make it, (laughs) like my yes or no does not determine where you're going to go next. Right. At all. It only just determines like, okay, are you, are you going to be a good fit for so far? Because Mm -hmm. our shows are very intimate. Right. Mm -hmm. So most artists have never been in front of an attentive artist like an uh, audience like that like our our audience will uh, you can hear a pin drop you yeah. know performing yeah. like they're so in tune they're yeah. listening they're encapsulated with your content with what you're saying they're listening to every word that you speak it's not necessarily a lot of background music and bar and like yep. the you know the mixing and all that kind of stuff none of that is happening everybody is you're literally standing in front <laughs> of an audience and I've heard so many artists it's just like whoo I was nervous. Like I'm never <laughs> nervous. Yeah. But this is, it makes you nervous because it doesn't make you nervous, but I'm just saying some yeah. artists get nervous just because they are so attentive. So it's important to understand that even when you're sending over videos, regardless of whether you're sending them to so far, are you sending them to a festival that your video needs to, needs to, to embody what their space looks like. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're t- talking about a festival, like sending a so far video that's acoustic and like warm and you know it may not work for the booking agent at a festival right because thousands of people so they need to know that you have like a band or at least a trio or you know i'm saying something that can like get the energy the the similar set exactly right so that needs to be something that you put on your radar too as an artist when you're submitting to anyone right it's just like does this video fit the space that I'm trying to perform in. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, this last question for the evening. So Nick says, I have had success hitting cities directly, have also uh, been talking here to Chicago to put together something for August, definitely trying to put together a tour. So thanks for all this info. Great. That's awesome, Nick. Glad to hear it. So so, uh, Jared works directly with me. Okay. Uh, so he works with only he only works with the Chicago uh, local booking lead. It's actually the first market that we rolled out that role for. So I'm very excited to hear that you've been talking to him already. Nice, awesome. And then Alexis, uh, another comment actually understood. I'll be applying, emailing ASAP. I appreciate all this information Yay, so much. Yep, I'm so glad this was helpful. So, is there any parting words you want to share with the folks before we wrap up? Uh, you know what? Just keep being different. Keep doing you. Like mm-hmm. keep engaging with your audience. That is so so imperative. Um, in the industry, and really like, you know, showing up when you're supposed to show up, being mm-hmm. on time. Like, listen, I, that's so important. Like, <laughs> we say that the that load in is at six thirty, and not necessarily just for so far, but any gig that you. Yeah um are booking like respect the time respect the space you know that's so important like you just don't know who's in the audience you don't know who's sitting at the bar you don't know who's working at the venue you don't you don't know who they know so always really try to put your best foot forward um practice you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying like prepare for the gig don't Mm -hmm. come prepared because people can see that when you get on stage and we had that a lot And also, again, understand from a so far standpoint that you get feedback and we take that feedback very seriously when it comes to our crew, because they really are our eyes and ears on the ground. And so if they're saying this artist was unprofessional, I I have artists that have killed it on stage. They're Mm -hmm. amazing. But off stage, they're Mm a-holes and they're they're disrespectful to our team and they're Mm -hmm. disrespectful to the host. And and these are like venues that are offering their spaces up to us, right? And so Mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we're respecting them. We're respecting our crew members and we're also respecting our our artists. And so the artist experience is just as important to me too. Um, And so, yeah, just making sure that you just show up, you do do exactly what you're asked to do, you know, when it comes to the performance side of it, stay within your set time, all that good stuff. But that's just, you know, some helpful feedback back hopefully that'll help you in your next show cool esther man thank you so much 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh. I greatly appreciate it. You gave such good, valuable information. Um, everyone has her email. You guys have her email address. So feel free to reach out there if you have any other questions. Don't spam her. Do not put her on your mailing list or anything like that. Shoot her a message. <laughs> yes, please. Um, but yeah, again, thank you so much uh, for this. Uh, this was super, super helpful. I'm definitely going to share it with Ken because you definitely uh, dropped some gems in here that he needs to hear. Like, yeah. look. <laughs> Stop Look, bugging. You know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something similar for the the whole Chicago artist community because I feel like that that conversation needs to be had. With oh, is it like that? Really? It's a Chicago thing. You it's know, not just a Chicago thing. It's okay. a thing. But I'm gonna start with Chicago because it's our okay. largest market. So you know, please do, please do. I'm for it. If you need some help or some uh, support for it, let me know. I got you. Yeah, they they something else out there. I don't claim Chicago. I always tell I don't claim Chicago. I just lived there for nine years. That's it. <laughs> I rub <rubbed> Detroit. <laughs> I got so, you. I got yeah. you. I got to connect you with our Detroit um, local league. You know, yeah. they do all of our shows down there. They're amazing, man. Doing great. Do you guys do anything in Cleveland? Uh, oh, no. We do. I think Cleveland is only doing maybe one or two shows a month right okay. now. Okay. Okay. Um, but I'll double check that. But I know for sure yeah. Detroit is. Detroit popping. I love yeah. it. Detroit, I, yeah. I, I usually go visit my mom and leave, you know, but yeah, Detroit is is popping. I'm glad I'm I'm closer now to, yeah. to get over there for some stuff. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to to getting out there and seeing what the the new generation uh, ha, has going nowadays. Yeah, uh, but I'll, I'll connect you with the Cleveland too, because you're in Cleveland right now, right? Yep, I live in Cleveland, but I'm always I'm back and forth between here and Detroit and even Chicago. But yeah, I live okay, in Cleveland. Cool. Yeah, I'll connect you with the Cleveland team too, um, or at least like sign you up for a show so you can go and meet the team. Yeah, right. you know, I've never been to a so far show as a as a audience what? member. Yes, I've never been. I've always went with Ken. I always went with the artist. <laughs> Ken, I got booked for a show, and then there's an artist down in Atlanta, Najee. Najee, mm -hmm. person. Yep, mm -hmm. I managed him for, for a quick minute, and he did some stuff with us so far in Chicago as well. But I've never been to a, a so far show as a, oh. as a as the audience. Yeah. You got to go. So you can experience that side of it. I would actually recommend... If you if you haven't been to a so far show on this call, like please email me. Even if you're not interested in performing, I'll just yeah. give you a code so you can go and experience a show. Yeah. Um, just just so you can kind of see what it's all about because it, it really is a great experience. Yeah, um, I'm gonna definitely do that after having you know this conversation with you. I I should definitely do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, awesome. Please. Thank you, Patrice. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Again, thank you so much. And um, yeah, we'll we'll connect soon. Yes. Thank y'all so much. Nice, right. nice at least seeing y'all names on here. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone have a good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.